This week on the Music Biz Weekly, episode 108, exploring music discovery with Twitter Music and other apps. You're listening to the Music Biz Weekly Podcast, your go-to resource for music marketing advice, music industry news, and discussion on the latest technologies in the digital music marketplace. Visit musicbizweeklypodcast.com for more information. And now, and now, and now. Please welcome your host, Michael Brandvold from Michael Brandvold Marketing, and Brian Thompson from Thorny Bleeder. Take it away, boys. Go! Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast. This is episode number 108, and it's May. May 1st that we're recording this, May yeah. 3rd that you're listening to this. <laughs> Happy May to you, good sir. And thank God I'm not in Minnesota, because oh, they no. have a winter storm warning for six to nine inches of snow today. It's not winter anymore. No oh, shit. <laughs> Hell. That's why I don't live there. That's ridiculous. So what's on tap today, Michael? Um, I thought we could talk a little bit about music discovery and Twitter music. I mean, Twitter yeah. music hit, what, two weeks ago? Two a weeks week ago? ago. And uh, I played with it pretty extensively for the first day. Mm -hmm. And I got to admit, I haven't touched it since then. I've only gone back to it to show a couple of people. It has not resided in my pocket with the play being depressed. And um, yeah, no. Yeah, I, I mean, it, 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 it was, you know, it was something that I thought about writing an article on. Just what were my thoughts of Twitter music? Good, bad? What What would I love to see? And it just kind of felt like, why don't we just discuss that and general music discovery as well? Um, yeah, well, I mean, you know, on uh, on the day that we're recording this, there's a couple of articles that, that popped out recently, one on the Next Web, uh, another article that came out on um, Digital Music and News, and even actually Hypebot is talking about it as well. And they're all saying, Twitter music, it's like failing. Um, as of the date of us recording this, it is now dropped in the Apple iTunes store or in the App Store to number 126 overall huge drop i mean they yeah. they they compared it to is it going to be like the Facebook poke app right Do we all remember that moment of brilliance when that yeah. app hit yeah i think that's you know another app that everyone used for about a day before that kind of just got lost or deleted yeah and, and you so, know and, and and i don't necessarily want to say that the Twitter music app has no merit. I mean, I used it, and there's some very cool and interesting things, but I think it was also, from a music discovery standpoint for me, it was lacking a few things that I felt were kind of critical that, that may actually prohibit me from using it daily. Right. Well, I'll tell you what my, my very first impression is, is... I was stunned that it was a standalone separate app. I was stunned that it was a different URL on the web. I was, I mean, if you're really going to make the most of Twitter, which is like, you know, one of the top three social networks on the planet, um, I kind of was thinking it would be like a, 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 another tab on my Twitter app, not a whole new app. So, so I thought it would be more integrated within the experience of actually using Twitter. Mm -hmm. So as I'm look, reading tweets, someone says, hey, listen to this, and maybe I slide over, hit a button, and it pops up and plays in the background while I can keep on using Twitter. But no, it's a completely different app, which utilizes the data from Twitter to populate the, the music, and, you know, the, the people that you're following and, and what people are talking about amongst your feed. Um, but there's no integration with using Twitter. It's really weird. It, 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 it's weird in that sense. It's also weird in that it's pulling in all this data, as you said, to populate it. But you really have no way to customize and filter and, and massage that data. You just got to deal with what's being dumped at you. 
Right. So and, you you and, scroll through the screen, and if you don't like what you see, tough titties. Well, that that <laughs> that's sort of you know my biggest complaint. Well, immediately the first item I wrote on my notes, I wrote a number of notes down the the day I was I was using the app. The first one was, I want to be able to filter by genre, because no disrespect, but I don't want R and B, rap, and hip hop in my Twitter music stream. I'm not interested in listening to that. I can't get rid of that. Well, you know what? That ties in perfectly to the number one complaint I have with RDO, which is 50% of the back end of Twitter music. RDO to this day doesn't have genre. Now, maybe that's why Twitter music doesn't have it. Well, so, so you know, and you brought up another interesting point. So RDO and Spotify are the two big players feeding music into Twitter music. If you don't have a count on either one of those, you don't listen to the full song in Twitter music. You only get the 90 second sample that iTunes supplies you with. Right. That in itself, I sort of feel like eliminates a lot of potential people from using this. See, my hopes were that um, because Twitter is so massive, that if it was, like, again, I was expecting it to be integrated right into the existing platform. So I was thinking that if Twitter music within Twitter itself became more prominent and obvious and more a part of the whole experience of using Twitter, I was really thinking that, hey, this could be one of the things that gets that brings more awareness to subscription paid services, that makes people finally, maybe that could be the tipping point where they're like, you know what, maybe I will. I mean, because this looks really valuable and maybe I, maybe I will start paying for music again. So I thought it, it could have been a great catalyst to grow the subscriber base. But um, if it's already dropped off to number 126 on the App Store, yeah, it's a big I, who cares. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the chief reason I stopped using it was not – was, was the ability not to filter at all. I can't filter by genre. I can't ignore artists. Even, even artists in a genre I like, there are some that I just don't want to hear their music repeatedly given to me. And music discovery, to some extent, needs to be a combination of blind discovery, but me also kind of steering it towards what I like. I don't want just an application to say, here's a whole bunch of music. Yeah. And because it becomes too much work for me to scroll through this list and go, well, where's the one track that I might be interested in discovering out of the 99 others that I know I have zero interest in? Totally. Well, and the other thing is that, I mean, it, like for me, like I'm a, an, an RDO subscriber, so RDO already has a social component built into it. I can look at what you played in your mm -hmm. history. I can look at your collection. I can look at your playlists. We can even create a collaborative playlist together. Um, and of course, what I play, if I choose to, it gets streamed to, uh, to Facebook so that others can see it. Maybe they might see what I'm playing on Facebook and click play on it there. Um, that doesn't even happen with, within Twitter music. So if I click play on Twitter music, my friends on Facebook know that I'm listening to it, I think, because it maybe or maybe not. I would assume that it would show that it's playing on RDO, but maybe it isn't. I don't even know. Um, but my point is, is that there, uh, there, like you said, there is no way to fine-tune the results that it's giving you. It's like, nope, here's the results, and listen to it or not. Yeah, it's sort of, it literally, it's, here is everything that's being played right now, and just keep scrolling through this ginormous, long, never-ending list. And, and, and that wears thin. It wears you out very quickly. That, that's not discovery in, in any sense of the term for me. Well, and also there's no information other than a graphic. Right. So there's no context for what you might be hitting play on. There's no reviews. There's no thumbs up. All it is is an, a graphic their Twitter handle, a song title. And, and, and let, let me throw in something that just shows how, I don't know, I, I don't know if it's how poor the data is or how poor it's being presented. So I, I use RDO as well. And first of all, I can't log in to both Spotify and RDO in Twitter music. You've got to be one or the other. 
Right, okay. And they do have different catalogs between the two. There's a yes. slightly different catalog. Yeah, so yeah. that kind of sucked. But anyway, I was logged in through RDO. And it said, you might like Led Zeppelin. Awesome. I clicked on it. Started playing. What was I listening to? A tribute a cover band. band. Yeah. A cover band playing Led Zeppelin. Although, in Twitter music, it was the Led Zeppelin album cover. Ooh. I don't know how it was all working, but it looked like you were going to be listening to Led Zeppelin by all accounts. And, and only because I'm sure you know as well as I do, the Led Zeppelin catalog is not there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, 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 as soon as I saw that, it was literally a deliberate test of like, ooh, let me see who I'm going to listen to when I hit this. So even the data it's presenting is inaccurate. Now, for for like the maybe the average Twitter fan or Twitter music fan, um, they're they're probably following you know artists that they that they enjoy. They're probably following. Whereas you know me and you, we just follow you know everybody, regardless of you know whether we like their music or not. Not that we follow everybody, but. Right. Um, I don't follow people depending upon my, my style of music taste, is right. what I'm saying. Um, but whereas a music fan probably does. So in that regard, if you click on the suggested pane within Twitter music, um, or sorry, uh, now playing, which is tweets by people that you follow, um, it is kind of, then it is curated kind of dependent upon your tastes if who you're following is dependent upon your tastes. Did you notice that, this is one of the other things I made a note of, your own tweets show up in Now Playing? No, I didn't see that. Yes, I noticed that right away. It's like, so I, I was playing with Twitter Music, sending out some tweets to see what it looks like. Then I went over to Now Playing to see what is playing by the people I follow, and there I am. And I was just sort of like, why? I don't want to see myself. <laughs> you know, why am I showing up in that feed that's supposed to be the people I'm following? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. It's just, uh, I, I do like the look of the interface. I do like, um, it's I, a pretty fast loading app. It's fast. I like the concept of what it's all about, about pulling in this data of what various people are listening to. It is great in that, in that concept. It's great for discovery. I think it just needs, it feels like it's a beta app right now. It, yeah. needs, it needs some more fine-tuning so it can be a little more customized, a little more efficient. Listen, I'd love to be able to say, I want to see what's now playing on a Twitter list that I've made. What are the influencers listening to? Well, big time. I mean, like I said, I really feel that it's, and this just is a big disconnect in my mind, is there is no Twitter integration. Yeah. I mean, yeah, each, each artist that we're looking at has a follow button, okay, but I'm not seeing any tweets. There's no tweets from the people that, are, that, it's, that it's pulling this data from. There's no tweets from the artist. Um, and to me, it's just like, uh, I can only sit here and stare at album covers for so long. And again, I don't know what context, like who is this artist? Mount Kimball. I'm sorry, I don't know who that is. And the only way for me to find out who it is would be to, well, go to Google, but now you're making me leave the app to find out more? Like, shouldn't there be um, some a bio at least? Let me click on it so I see a bio for that artist or, or something. But all it has is the follow and a play button. Right. Um, so, yeah, there there lots of opportunity for but improvement. Doesn't it, <laughs> doesn't it sort of feel like it was rushed to market? Like, all of a sudden... Twitter music all of a sudden showed up on everybody's radar one week, and then next week the app was there. Well, yeah, and you know, I, I'm probably not the only one that has this speculation, but it may be perhaps Twitter trying to beat another big uh, electronics uh, company to the market with their music next music iteration. Because, I mean, let's face it, everyone's talking about, uh, you know, Apple and will they come out with iRadio, which will be like a Pandora competitor, or will they come out with a, a music streaming service of their own? And that remains to be seen. I mean, people are still talking about iWatch, for crying out loud. Um, so who knows if Apple will ever do this, but I think the writing is on the wall for downloads to no longer be relevant 
um, in the next, I don't know what it's going to be, three to five years. Uh, I, I would almost say it could be as short as 12 months. Depends yeah, on how quickly well, Apple comes to the market on this and, and how how robust their system is. But, you know, I, I've, 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 I've pretty much... I've pretty much given up on downloads completely in about 12 months' time now. Oh, I have. I mean, for me personally, I haven't downloaded anything in eons. Um, pretty much due in part to RDO. Um, you know, there's the odd thing that I still need to download, but very, very few and far between. But why I think it might be longer than 12 months is I do a, a lot of, I've been doing lots of teaching and guest speaking to other classes. And, um, you know, these are kids, young adults who are, who live and breathe music. They're performing, they're recording, they're going to production school. They're like, they, that's their life is music. I would say 90% of the students, and these are probably aged 19 to 26, they don't know what RDO is. Oh, no, I, I, I agree with that. They don't know what Spotify is. I agree with that. They don't even know what the term subscription music service means. And, and these are people who live and breathe music. So there's a massive awareness campaign or uh, awareness that's needed, and it's a huge job. And but it's, but I, th I think that could change very quickly when if Apple, Apple shows up. Right. If, if Apple showed up June 1 saying, we're here, by July 1, a lot of people who never had any idea are going to know all about subscriptions and streaming services. If. If. So, that, I mean, that, that's the big if. It could, it could be shorter than five years depending on how quickly Apple comes to the market with it. Yeah. Because Apple just, and I'm not saying it's because Apple's going to have the better product. Apple has the customer base. Exactly. If, well, they've if all of a sudden iTunes 12 or 13 turns on streaming, you've already got an account on a streaming service that has a credit card registered to it. I was just going to say the credit card is already there. Everything is already there. It's, all you have it, to do is... It's already on your devices. You just have to click enable. Exactly. Um, now, I mean, there's still, I mean, there's so much speculation on, on what Apple's going to do uh, because obviously... Um, iTunes Music Store has massive sales through it, massive. And if they were to enable a paid subscription service, um, well, for the most part, a huge chunk of those downloads would disappear overnight. Yeah. Um, but then again, who knows? Would there would the would the amount of people that subscribe increase? Like, who knows? I anyway, back I to I still think. The, the player you don't hear a lot about in music streaming is Amazon. They're not thrown around in the names of everybody else. And, and I think that's, I don't know why, and I sort of think that's a, a mistake. Because they've already got a streaming service in place. They're a video-on-demand streaming service. They've been that for a couple years. But still, when we even talk about streaming video, I mean... It, that that isn't available in Canada, but you know, obviously, I'm inundated with American media and I read American websites. I very, I never hear people talk about Amazon streaming. It's always Netflix. Oh, I I, I agree. I'm that. I'm just saying, I Amazon's got the infrastructure in place. Right. Amazon has the catalogs. Amazon has the credit cards. I feel like it's one of those things where Amazon literally just needs to flip the switch and say, great, your cloud service now is a streaming service. Yeah, and then that brings to, I mean, of course, and then if we're going to talk about Amazon, then we got to talk about Google Play as well. But see, the difference there is Google's not necessarily already established with all of that. Google's building it. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Amazon's got it. I mean, l listen, if you've got an infrastructure in place to stream movies and TVs, the infrastructure can easily handle yep. streaming a three-minute MP3 file. And we saw RDO do the inverse, where they had music streaming first, and now they have... That's right. I forgot all about that. I've got an invite video. from them. I haven't even gone and checked it out yet. Yeah. Well, again, there is another service not available in Canada. Um, you know, maybe it'll take five years for it to reach like it did Netflix. <laughs> and we still don't have Pandora up here. God. 
damn licensing. Yeah, it's an ongoing headache. Um, well, let's talk. Let's shift the gears a little bit and talk about how. What is your? So you you, you said that um, you know you're not downloading as much anymore. So, mm-hmm. what is kind of your method of of consumption uh, for music? I, I actually asked my class this at uh, at the college the other day, and it was interesting to to hear um, you know these these students who are in their their early twenties what how they consume music. So what is what is your kind of pattern now, including the apps that you use? So I'm I'm pretty much exclusive streaming now. And I'm on RDO and Spotify. Part of it is because it's business expense and I want to stay on top of both. So services. you pay for both? I pay for both. Okay. Um I I would tell you honestly, I would drop RDO in a heartbeat if Spotify mm. had a better what's new section. Really? Yes. Because when you click what's new in Spotify, you get a very small subgenre of, you know, here's 24, 12 releases today. That's it. You know, in RDO, when you click what's new, it's a long list of everything. And you can say what's new this week, what was new two weeks ago. You know, I like and, that. And it's a never-ending scroll, it's a never too. never-ending scroll. And, and yeah. that's actually become a weekly habit of mine. Every Tuesday, because I wanted to try and recreate that new release Tuesday experience that used to live in the offline world, yeah. I jump onto RDO every Tuesday and I create a playlist called New Release Tuesday This Date. I go to the What's New and I just start scrolling through it and go, that looks interesting, that looks interesting. I drag it into that playlist and there's my new music I'm checking out for the week. Can't do that nearly as easily and efficiently hmm. in Spotify. In Spotify, you almost still have to know what you're looking for. Now, even with, uh, I mean, Spotify has all of these third-party apps. Isn't there something there to integrate to make that a better but experience? But a lot of those third-party apps are branded apps, so it's, you know, oh. it's a magazine pushing their genre, pushing their style of music. There's not, again, you know, I would... Even iTunes has this. You can go into iTunes and just see everything that was released on Tuesday. Yeah. I okay. Want, so I want you... the big dump. So, so that you know, I use both services. I only use RDO for that particular reason. Hey, Coda. <laughs> Going to her throne. Um. So, so I consume. Let my me ask you this: via streaming. Have you used Deezer yet? Have you used Mog yet? No, 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 no. I haven't. I haven't. I'm not using every single one of them. I just, I, yeah. to some extent, I don't have the time, and I haven't been convinced that there's a significant enough reason why they're going to be better than what I'm already using. Now, what about? Uh, so that's okay. So that's streaming. But what 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 else complements your streaming? Like, what else is your mode of music discovery? What is what are some other apps that you're using? Tune to in maybe? radio. Okay. I use that a lot. I'm always jumping around listening to different channels, different stations around the world. Yeah. I find that really interesting way to discover music. Um, I still have an extensive collection of music that I own personally, and I've uploaded all of that to the Amazon cloud service, okay. which is beautiful to have that. Totally just blows away the need to ever have iTunes again. Right. I've got 50,000 songs in the cloud huh. that I can search, playlists, anything I want, and it's, it's, it's available on my iPhone. Now, what uh, what made you choose the Amazon service over iCloud? Because iCloud, uh, was it iTunes Match? iTunes Match, right. Um, only will allow you to upload 25,000 songs. Oh, that's right. That, well, how do they word it? You can only have 25,000 songs. Per that, account? That, or- that were not purchased through Am- through iTunes. Right. So if you bought your music through somebody else, or in my case, I had like, I don't know how many thousands of CDs that I bought and I ripped, iTunes would not let me upload those. Right. So, and there, and there was literally no option to even just say, I'll pay more for the ability to upload it. They just, nope, you can't do it. 
So, so for you, it's uh, so you've got TuneIn Radio, listening to terrestrial radio from around the world, um, your existing collection on Amazon Cloud. Yep. And Spotify and RDO. Spotify and RDO. Those are probably the the main ways I'm I'm consuming yeah. my music. You know, music discovery comes through various channels. Um, I love spending time in Spotify, hitting the related artists, and just going down that rabbit hole of right. related artist, related artist, related artist, and you find interesting things that way. Um, tune in radio, it's just normal radio discovery. Hey, who was that? Oh, that's great. Let me go find them on Spotify. Yeah. Um, and then f- friends and, and, and family recommendations, you know? Yeah. When you see somebody you're following on Facebook or Twitter who talks about something, I'm immediately jumping onto Spotify and saying, is it there? How about any music blogs? Are any music blogs that you follow that are influencing you at all? Not, or? not really. Not really. You know, I've, I've sort of taken the attitude of I'm not a big fan of, of music reviewers, so to speak. People telling me what's good, what's bad. Because it's all just personal opinion, and and I know I've liked a lot of music that people would say flat out sucks. Right. So I I would much rather trust the judgment of friends sure. who I know I've got similar styles of music taste to, or you know I'm hanging out and you know a Facebook page of a theme, you know people who like this style of music. Okay, well somebody mentions this. Right. Um, I'm going to go check it out. Yeah. Totally. Um, I trust that type of stuff so much more than I'll trust any sort of a blogger. Because yeah. in, I guess in some, say, in some sense, being a marketing person, in the back of my head, I always think that blogger might be paid off to write that. Oh, in a lot of cases, they probably in a are. Lot of case, yeah, right. In a lot of Pitchfork. cases, probably, <clears throat> hey, it is. You know, or whether it's not even paid off, it's just like, Oh, I'm just going to give a great review because it's a good friend of mine. I don't really yeah. like it, but I'll give you a good review. Or I owe that guy a favor. I owe him a favor. And you know, reviewers have been that way since day one, pre-internet. Well, Why the whole music industry now? is based on favors. I mean, trust me, me, yeah. me stalking millions of albums into the retailers I used to work with, um, a lot of albums would get more shelf space because favors. Exactly, exactly. So... Friends become more legitimate to me. Yeah, you know the recommendation of somebody, or just seeing that somebody was listening to something, and to some extent, that's why Twitter music has great potential, because I'm blind, sort of the fly in the wall. I can watch what people are listening to. I can go, oh my god, that friend I'm following is listening to that. I've never heard of him. Let me go check it out. And well, that's why it just needs better filtering to help me find that and help present that to me in an easier way yeah you know i still think right now um you know it's easier for me to see what people are listening to on facebook than it is on twitter oh because again it's a second app it's like no i have enough apps i honestly don't need another app put it on another tab yeah well you know you're you're right i mean i don't need another app to do another bit of music listening now now what now i'm supposed to stop using spotify which has this huge catalog of all my playlists stop using that and go listen to twitter music yeah see for me my uh i mean i like you uh pretty much all of my listening is done via streaming now rdo i listen to it every day um but I also use a few apps that you didn't mention that I use sometimes, actually more than sometimes, uh, more than RDO. And they're free services. I use Songza an awful lot. I'm familiar with it. I've never used it. Songza is, to me, um, like, for example, I wake up in the morning, the last thing I want to decide is what the hell I want to listen to. <laughs> because I, I have a, a morning routine that I go through, I'm writing, I'm creating playlists for or, or stuff for my newsletter and podcast and whatnot. So for Zongza, 
I open it up, and as soon as you open it up, whether it be on the web or on your phone or on your iPad, it knows the time of day that you are. So as soon as you open it, it says, oh, it's Friday morning. What would you like to listen to? Would you like uh, music to listen to with your coffee? Would you like happy music for, that, so you can sing in the shower with? Would you like something to exercise to? Would you like to boost your energy? Would you like to go back to sleep? So the first thing is, is what's the context mm-hmm. that you're in within you hitting, opening it up? Right. So for me, it's like, yeah, I feel kind of sleepy. I think I just like some quiet indie music to uh, have a coffee with. <laughs> right, right. And then you click that. And then once you click that, it gives you um, six potential playlists that it's offering you within that context. So it says, okay, would you like whatever? It, there's a different vibe for everything. Um, so in, in, you just hit one of those playlists and it instantly starts playing. There's no advertising, none. And it's great. And it's all, are the the playlists human curated, auto curated? They're all curated by humans. And and do you have input in it saying, you know what, this wasn't quite the playlist I liked. You can uh, hit a thumb up on tracks that you enjoy. Uh, And if there's something that you, if there's a track you don't like, you can hit a thumb down. So maybe it'll play it less next time or whatever. Um, Whoops. Um, And you can create your own playlists, but you can't listen to your own playlists because then it's on demand. So your playlists are for other people to listen to. Correct. Correct. So, for example... Can you uh, search out other people's playlists specifically? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I could create a playlist that you could listen to, and you could create a playlist that I could listen to, and they could also be searchable for everyone. We could put it on our blog and use it as content marketing that everyone could listen to, um, except for the the person who created it. Anyway, uh, I use songs a ton because, again, there's no ads, there's no talking, it's all vibey. Uh, depending upon my energy and what I'm at and what I'm doing. So example, like right now, it's like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to probably take the dog out for a walk as soon as we're done. And in my mind, it's like, oh, what do I want to listen to? I don't know. So I just click on songs. And it's like, hey, it's uh, Wednesday afternoon. The sun is shining. Do you want to go for an energetic walk? And be like, yeah, okay. And then I'll hit something. And more often than not, I'm happy with what I hear. Okay, and then cool. I, and like you, when I when I hear a song that I like, I'll make note of it, and then I'll go and listen to the full album on on audio. You know, I think I think one of the and this comes from the difference in how how you listen or want to listen to music. So much of the time when I'm listening to music, I'm specifically going, I want to listen to this. Right. So, and it sounds like you're more of I want to listen to something that feels like this. Well, for me, it, yeah, I think it depends on what I'm doing because during the day, I'm it, music is background for me during the day. I'm writing, I'm thinking, yep. I'm on phone calls, um, having consultations. So I don't really, if I choose to listen to something, I need, I want to, I want to be present in, enough to really, li- you know, get into it and really appreciate it because it's I'm I'm selecting this. But for the most part, I like just having some vibey background music that that I don't even really won't distract me from my task at hand right but in the evening or whatever when I'm not writing or or thinking too much I'll be like yeah okay I'm gonna go and listen to this and that's when audio comes out cool um so anyway so that's a little bit the other apps that I use uh in Canada, CBC Music uh it has a great app uh so I listen to um they have streaming playlists by style um, which are fantastic. Slacker FM, or it's not Slacker FM, just Slacker. Um, I still love that app. They've got great curated uh, playlists by style. So I kind of mishmash that with Songza. Um, and that's pretty much it for me, aside from, like you said, looking at what friends are doing on RDO or what people are um, tweeting or talking about. And those are kind of the main. You know, there, there, there's one app I don't use a lot. I have it because I found it very interesting. Because um, one of the things that we don't hear a lot of people talking about, and even I, I made note of this on my review of Twitter Music, is it would have been great if Twitter Music integrated 
band camp artists into it. Totally. So, and I think it was actually, I don't know, maybe it was a couple weeks ago when I was doing this. I went on the app store and I searched for band camp. And I'll be damned if there's not an app, it's free, called Band Camper. That's a music streaming app that streams everything that's in the band camp catalog. Every artist, every track. It's a full-blown streaming app. You just need to know what you're searching for. You search for that artist, it brings it up, you hit the play button, and you're listening to that artist. And so, yeah, you, you told me about, I'd never heard of it until right before we hit record, you mentioned it. And I was like, oh, I got to check this out. So I downloaded it, uh, you know, and I'm looking at it right now. And it's a shit, like, I just can't believe that Bandcamp hasn't done this on their own. I know. Like, guys, what are you doing? Talk about music discovery. Because here's the thing. Bandcamp is the place where music discovery should really live. Because that's where the new, the up and coming, the, the, you know, the interesting artists are really going to be there. They may not be in iTunes. They may not be in Spotify. They may not be in Artie or any of those others. They've got an indie release that's only in Bandcamp. Help and it's welcoming them. and it's welcoming to fans too because it's not like a reverb nation where it's just full of garbage. Garbage. You know, it it looks nice, it's clean, it's well played out, high quality streams. It's, well, first of all, it's also very easy to purchase the music from Bandcamp. I've I've purchased a number of items through there. I like it. Yeah. Help me find the other artists that are in this ginormous catalog you've got. So I'm looking at the app right now as we speak, and you know, again, it's not from Bandcamp; it's using their back end. Um, so unless you know what you're looking for, it's a useless app. And or, or you just want to sit here and play what's being purchased right at the moment. Yeah, that's the only interactivity it shows you is literally somebody just bought this right. like this second, so you can go and click play on that. Um, but you know, there's no top 50, there's no like, there's there's no no genres, there's no integration even with the discovery page, um, that Bandcamp has on their own website. So interesting. It's definitely an interesting app. It definitely needs work. I just think it's very cool because it's a little bit of an insight into that Bandcamp catalog, which really nobody is giving access to it needs to be mined there's it, some it, gems in there. there there is really good music in oh, band yeah. camp it's just and I, I i applaud them for trying to turn it into sort of a destination website now i just don't think that's going to happen but it's just not easy to find other well, stuff inside of band camp well it's amazing that they're putting their um their eggs in the basket of turning the website into the portal when really it should be the iPhone, man. That's where people listen to their music is on the iPhone when they're sitting on transit or, you know, walking around or they're plugging it into their car. You know, I have no knowledge of this, but what would it take to get the Bandcamp catalog into RDO and Spotify? Why doesn't that happen? Yeah, that, well then, I mean, that's what Reverb Nation does, right? They, They have that as an option to upload you know, your tracks that you have on your profile to, to those services. Um, or, yeah. or, or, or in Spotify, create a Spotify app that takes you into the Bandcamp catalog. I love the Spotify apps. I've, I play with a number of them. Um, actually, I, I, I will go back and say one of the, the best apps out there is by Classic Rock Magazine. Hmm. They have an amazing app that has amazing playlists that they curate, curate, um, and they're very responsive. Um, you know, a few weeks ago, the legendary producer Andy Johns passed away, and I sent a tweet off to him. I said, you know, I would love to have a playlist of all the various tracks that Andy Johns has worked on. And like two days later, they created this playlist, and it was inside their Spotify app, and it's just a great way to discover deep tracks. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, so I, I think the, the tools are out there. Twitter's got some potential. Spotify has. Audio has. Nobody's really quite nailed it. That's why 
we're using so many different apps to consume our music and to find music because nobody's got one thing that's just working. Yeah, well, I mean, on the on the one hand, Twitter music is still very, very young. It's only two weeks old, so you know, uh, Twitter, you know, obviously they seem fairly committed to it. This is only the the second product they've ever released, so they must be committed to it. So it'll be interesting to see how it takes shape. Take shape. Um, I was surprised though because we had both heard prior to it launching that SoundCloud was going to somehow be part of it. Be a part of it. And where the hell are they now? Yeah, I don't know. I think SoundCloud even announced that themselves on a blog post. Didn't they say we're happy to be uh have integration with Twitter with the upcoming Twitter music? Pretty sure I, I actually remember. read it from their blog. I might be wrong. Can't remember. Anyway, uh, there's just some ramblings from us on, you know, kind of exploring the, the topics of music discovery and Twitter music and other music apps. What, I, uh, what I'd love to do for homework on this one is have, mm. have you guys tell us what apps you use and where you discover your music. Big time. Oh, you know what? There is, I just have to quickly go to one second, I have to go to my Facebook messages Somebody um, sent me, here we go. This is from Mike Martin. Thanks for passing this along, Mike. Um, now, it is only a, a website, um, but it's interesting. It's called Beat Robo. Check out beatrobo.com when you have a chance. And um, that's all I'm going to say. Just check it out. It is a, a potential new way for you to... Discover music, and it might remind you of. Um, We're not going to get Rick rolled by going here, are we? No, no, no. <laughs> My as soon as I logged onto it, it reminded me of oh, this kind of looks like Turntable FM, but not. Okay. Anyway, check out Beat Robo. But yeah, uh, homework for the week: um, share with us what your listening patterns are what apps are you using and maybe there's um another brilliant app out there that is you know doesn't really have much awareness to it that we might uh, all dig yeah definitely okay so uh that brings us to the end of the podcast and the featured song of the week this week it's from ashley eman she's from victoria british columbia just across the pond from me and uh, you can find her at ashleyeman.com her name is spelled a-s-h-l-e-i-g-h e-y-m-a-n-n that's ashleyeman.com and here's her track out of space if you want your song to be featured on this podcast, then you got to click the little music x-ray button on either uh, Michael's website or my own, thornybleeder.com, and that'll take you right to the Dropbox. And um, without further ado, here is Out of Space by Ashley Eman. Thanks, Thanks, you guys. Thanks, guys.
This podcast is brought to you by Music X-Ray, 21st Century A&R. Get deals, get fans, and get better. At Music X-Ray, it levels the playing field for musicians, giving you direct access not only to industry decision makers, but to fans too. Strike up a free account at musicxray.com and check it out for yourselves. And if you want your song to be included in podcasts like this, that's where you go to find these opportunities. You've been listening to the Music Biz Weekly Podcast with your host, Michael Bramvold from Michael Bramvold Marketing and Brian Thompson from Thorny Bleeder. Visit musicbizweeklypodcast.com for more information.